is this is fun it is fun okay. but okay so i'll just i'll continue so i can answer everyone's questions um so does everybody understand what direct primary care is because i can skip right over that if you all get it i mean in a nutshell it's really just cutting out the insurance guy and that's how you keep the prices really low is because if we use an insurance company Right. You have to hire a whole team of people to do the claims, to follow up all of those claims and submissions and chase the money down, basically. So that's a whole process in itself. And, and nowadays, you know, with every type of insurance, you have to have a specialist in every single type of insurance plan, um, including Medicare, the, the big dog where it ha it's so complex that um, it has to be audited and and you know, every line by line item has to be exactly so. Otherwise the doctors and the hospitals and, and care providers are not getting paid. And so what's happened is it's just hyperinflated all of all of the the prices for everything because along the way so many hands have had um, had their part of that claim and they also have to add in what they, you know, what they need to pay. So if this way with direct primary care, it's literally just between you and your provider, right? You're paying, you're paying your provider directly. You're cutting all those middle guys out. So that's a way to control pricing. And um, cause there's, there's, that's the big question. It's like, what if I have insurance? What do I do with my current insurance plan? Right? So kind of to give you an idea of um, what happens if you were a member of Bloom, is you, you can still come and see me if you're a member. That's not a requirement. It's that we won't run the claim. So regardless of if it is a private plan, United or Aetna or whatever that is, we will not run the claim again because it's a process and I, I can't afford to hire multiple people to do all of that. And um, Medicare is the same way. We treat it just like an insurance plan. It's government sponsored, Medicaid, even TRICARE. Um, we don't run the claim. So you won't be denied access to the clinic. I mean, I'll still see you, but you'll have to be responsible for the charges that, for the services that you get at the clinic. Okay. And, and as far as, can you come and see me? Do you have to be a member? You know, are you committed to membership? And that's the only way you get through the doors. The answer is no. You do not have to be a member. You can come in and just be a drop-in patient. We always encourage membership because it's really for continuity of care. Um, I'm primary care, so I want to see people, you know, again and again and understand a continuum, continuum of their health. Um, it's really important to our team, um, and that's why this patient-centered medical home that we're trying to build is, is very important. So, we, we don't really want to see you just when you're sick. We're trying to prevent you from getting sick. And that's the whole purpose of seeing people back and forth and kind of wanting you to be a member of the Bloom Clinic is, um, you know, so that you're committed to seeing the same people over and over again, and they all understand your health. Okay, so that's been a big question too. Um, I think I'll see you had asked about TRICARE and there's so many different types of TRICARE and that's a government sponsored plan. And so um, I looked into it and it's very complex, but basically uh, it's, it's just like any other insurance. I, I don't want to make a mistake and tell you wrong. Um, there are some of those insurance plans and, and I will just sort of broadly say that a lot of these insurance plans are recognizing direct primary care as providing preventative health services. And so uh, I've heard from DPC providers is that you can take your, uh, your bill, your super bill from Bloom and submit it to a current insurance plan and get reimbursed for that care, just as if you were going to any other doctor's office. So for instance, I go see um, Melanie for chiropractic care and she doesn't she has a very small office they don't run insurance claims but I know chiropractic care is covered with my insurance plan so I take that bill and I submit it to my insurance and it gets paid that way but you know 
it's, it's sort of that same concept. So you'll just have to look into the details specific to your insurance um, because what they're doing now is because we cover all of the preventative services, they're treating us just like any other primary care provider. And they, they recognize that it's becoming more and more common. Um, and, you know, but you'll have to just work it out with them. I hate to say, give you wrong information because this is an evolving topic. And um, I, I don't know enough about every single plan to say or not whether they will uh, reimburse you for the membership fees. And that's the big thing is it's the membership fee that people are concerned about. I don't know, but talk to your insurance company. And I know a lot of them now are, are um, covering the cost of their insurance or sorry, uh, membership fee. Also, if you already have insurance and we go to send you for say an imaging study or something that we don't do in the clinic because in the clinic we'll be covering the point of care testing like you know if you need a urine dip or a strep swab or a flu swab the simple things that we always have done in the clinic setting um, and I say we always have done and I'm talking about Cerner as if you guys know everything that we've done at Cerner. But anyway, the things that you would expect, I have a whole list of labs that we'll be doing in the clinic. They're very simple point of care testing. It will be included in a membership package. And so outside of that, if we refer you to some outside service, um, I will be developing, and we've already got some you know, relationships going in the community with providers of different services such as imaging studies and diagnostic you know, labs, um, even specialists in the community. And so not everybody will have an insurance plan. And so we're negotiating for cash price, okay? If you have an insurance plan, you can submit it, have them submit through your insurance plan, that's fine. But if you will stop and just compare prices, it may not be necessary because you may actually be saving money to pay the cash price rather than submit it as a claim towards insurance, especially if you've got a deductible to meet. And I'll be recording kind of what I've had to pay personally for my, um, my cost of care using my previous insurance uh, coverage, which I thought was a great deal, but it was, you know, we paid for a deductible, then there was a portion of cost share. And then, sorry, let me admit a couple people. Um, and then there was a, a prop, you hit 100% after a certain point, and then there was a maximum amount that, that you paid out of pocket, and you felt really good, like, oh, I'd only have to pay $6,000 for the entire year for my family, but I'll help, I'll kind of walk through the calculations of that, because until I really sat down and looked at the numbers, it was really, you know, like, the num the, the money was out of your paycheck before I even saw it. So it didn't really hit you um, how much money you were actually spending on your insurance because no one, no one ever accounts for their premiums as money they've already spent. And that's sort of a retainer fee to have your plan and that's gone, right? And so whatever bills you have to accumulate after that um, are still gonna be things that you will pay for. So I will, diagram that all out and post it if you guys are interested in just following the numbers along because it does get really complicated. Um, I mean, it took us, took me and Joel a while to kind of walk through that ourselves, you know, so I will do that. Okay, so um, I've had a question about what's the difference between a direct primary care practice and, and a concierge service. I think concierge has been this this um, kind of, you know, special doctor's plan for people, um, you know, that, that's been out for a while. And now CPC has come out and everybody kind of gets it that, you know, if you, if you pay out of pocket for this special treatment, I guess, that that's sort of concierge. Well, so the, they have some similarities where you have sort of the private, doctor that does all of these things for you and um, it's a smaller patient panel the doctor has to manage okay so usually in the community it's about 2500 patients or so per doctor okay 2500 and I would say that's 
I don't know, Becca can probably chime in if she has any numbers, but 2,500, I think at Cerner, I was around 2,000 or so, um, but 2,500 up to probably 5,000 per, per physician that they're managing. Well, in a DPC practice or a concierge practice, it's much smaller. You're talking about numbers less than 500 or up to 500 for some practices. Um, and that is the total patient panel that they manage. So that's huge, okay? So you can imagine that if there is a panel of a doctor handling 2,500 patients, why it's hard for you to get in to see this guy, okay? Because there's not physically enough time in the day to get people in you know, in one day. Um, and remember that traditional billing fee for service with an insurance plan, doctors can't get paid through phone calls with you. They can't get paid through um, text messaging or a phone message through the nurse, even though they're providing care, they can't get paid with that. So that is why you are always asked to come in to be physically seen in the office. And that's why the schedule gets so overwhelming for each physician because insurance dictates how the doctor will get paid for those visits. Okay, so you can see that affects, you know, it just tumbles down into how quick you are going to receive care from your physician. And they are, they're stuck because that's the only way they're gonna be able to charge is if they physically have you in their office, okay? I'm going to mute everybody except, and you, you can unmute yourself if you have got a question, okay, because I'm hearing an echo. Okay, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, okay. So anyway, so that's sort of the dilemma that this, we caught, got caught in is this insurance thing, and then people are complaining, and now the DPC and concierge were real brilliant and they are taking care of smaller patient populations, you know, and so that's great. So now you've got a doctor who is taking care of maybe, you know, a, a fraction of the patients they used to take care of. And I can't even imagine the feel of that because, you know, you have more time with each patient, right? You can actually attend to whatever, um, you know, issues they have. You can answer the phone and talk to them on the phone. All of these things um, because it's a smaller patient panel. So the, a big difference that you'll see probably with the concierge practice and the DPCs is concierge will still, majority of them still take insurance or they run claims through insurance plans. And from my um, research, it's it's because it's an older population of patients. Most of the concierge are internal medicine physicians. They have an older population of patients. So it's typically um, Medicare that they are working with still. So they're still submitting claims to Medicare, okay, and other insurance plans, and also receiving a monthly subscription um, fee from their patients. Um, and I, for me, that's really complex to try to manage both because of all the strict guidelines on these insurance plans, I think it's really tricky. And the whole purpose of direct primary care is to bring costs down. So limiting overhead expenses, I think you still, still need other people helping you with that. But that's concierge medicine. And um, they talk about accessibility for concierge too, about how you're supposed to have uh, you know, better access to your physician and all of that. But that also applies to the direct primary care physicians. So with the DPC physicians, these are usually family physicians and it is still a month to month subscription plan. Um, the cost of the, the plans on direct primary care are typically lower. And most of those physicians do not run the claims through insurance, even though their patients may still carry some level of insurance. Hey, okay. Chris, um, real quick, yes. we have about 10 minutes left in the call. Okay. And, you know, I, I also hear a lot of questions from people um, and I always refer them to Christine. So um, maybe we can open up this last 10 minutes for kind of an open dialogue because you, you, you put a lot of information out there. And I'm still learning things because I'm not a doctor, but I play one on, yeah. on TV. So um, if maybe anybody have any questions, and if not, maybe continue on. 
So I've got and, and remember, you are all muted right now, so. Uh, yeah, so unmute yourself if you have a question. <laughs> So, um, so anyway, so DPCs is really for, you know, people that um, they want a certain level of care and, and um, smaller setting. For me, it's really important to have the smaller setting, smaller patient panel, more communication patient with between patients and me and be able to provide that level of care for my patients. And it's really hard when my patient panels are you know a couple thousand so that that's the whole purpose of this um i have a whole list of services that will be provided with the membership again it's not only for members if if i have a patient that's not is not ready to commit to membership but they need care if the pricing will just be different for people who drop in for a service rather than you know come in as a member okay because it's a package deal for membership kind of like you have netflix or you go to a gym you know you don't pay per piece of equipment you use you just use all of it right and so that's sort of the the idea behind that um and it's honestly simpler for me as the owner of the business is to not have to nickel and dime and line item every single thing that i will be billing so I kind of like that having the membership panel is a super easy to, to do. Um, the hey, Dr. Mendo, yes, I do have a quick question. If uh -huh. we want to, like, what's the next step and how do we make sure like Caleb's files, for example, uh -huh. how do we get them to you and how soon can that happen? So right now we're just going to be launching the virtual part because the timeline got really crunched up and um, I'm like, hey team we got to get this going like right now you know and so they're working on the landing page so we can get at least a virtual piece going um and then i don't have the building yet but virtual care we can get that we're probably joel correct me if i'm wrong but it's probably going to be up and going by next week i'm yeah. wait i was waiting on medical malpractice to get in line and all of this stuff and the t i have already my team members lined up and and some folks ready to go um, and I won't say yet exactly the services. Um, we've got the specific things that we're gonna be doing with our services, but very much similar to what you've already experienced before. Um, I'll have a nurse full time with me. And then we also have the other complementary health providers, such as, um, you know, for urgent care, we have um, somebody that'll be wellness coaching, um, you know, that sort of thing. So. So more to come on that. That'll be part of the packaging that will open up in August. So okay. real quick, I, I think part of the question, and maybe you're getting to it, was can you get the records? If someone's at Cerner or another doctor, do you have access to pull those into your system? Okay. So what happens is with any patient that signs up, an, an invitation will go out to you and you will receive like this clipboard. Remember these clipboards, right? And so this is a clipboard sent directly from the EMR that we have, and it will ask you to fill out all the patient information. And just like with any any other clinic, you know, we will have to um, get permission to get records, etc. But it's all paperless and easy, so it, it should not be a problem. It should be very quick. So okay, so that should be a really easy thing. Now, right now, it's not a membership base. It just simplifies things because it's all virtual. Um, so we are just doing per visit kind of uh, uh, charges and visits. It's not a membership like, oh, you know, um, coming soon, because I know it's a long time to wait till August, but if there are people interested in a membership virtual, you know, care, and they want to transition to just membership with all for full service with the clinic, I've got some things I'm working with right now, trying to come up with like a pricing point with that. Um, but that is that is a capability. And um, I will have like a remote monitoring kit that folks can can purchase either through us at a discount or you can go online and get probably get one off of Amazon or whatever. But it's a really it's a it's a medical grade kit that is you keep at your home and it will allow for monitoring remotely. Okay, so that's really cool. Um, does that answer your question, Lori? Okay, all right. Uh, we only have a couple minutes left, so. I'll just mention the states. So um, with the COVID, they've relaxed the states and there's now interstate 
they opened up interstate licensing, basically. So I'm licensed in Kansas, Missouri, and they have relaxed our ability to, to have reciprocity across state lines. Not every state has joined the compact agreement, but more and more are. And I'm sure with just a matter of a couple of months, I'm sure every state will be on this compact. So we've started the process on that. And um, so I am, you know, I'll be expanding the, the states that I'll be taking patients in. So this virtual membership might be actually bigger than I expected it to be um, across states. So, all right, so does anyone have questions? I'll be sending out a FAQ with but all the- Katie, Katie had a question and oh. Laura, so Katie? <laughs> I'm sorry, just really quick, and I may have missed it um, when you we were just answering Lori's question. So I saw on the website that you can pre-register. Um, do you recommend that people, if they're interested, to go ahead and do that, even though you said you're still working out like the different packages or membership levels and things like that? Yes, that's okay. a great question. We've been tossing that around. So pre-registration, we're probably going to have to relabel it because it doesn't start till August. So it, it will actually... Act put you in the panel because I told you we only I used to have 2,000 patients and I'm going to max out probably at 500 um, and I'm going to be pretty firm with that that number because it's the, the level of care that we are we want to give our patients and we can't physically do that if we continue on the way traditional medicine is done and so you know because with the home visits and everything that we want to offer our patients so I would say go ahead and sign up. It will commit you to the package that we have now, but there's actually tiers of membership and you can always change it, whatever you wanna do when we, you know, when we are finalized on that, but at least it gives you an idea of what the basic membership looks like because it's gonna be expanded and they'll, they'll, there's two tiers above that where it's basically just a little dives deeper into maybe more nutrition or health coaching or therapy sessions or fitness sessions or things like that, um, or home visit or whatever. It expands on what we already offer, but some people may want that, you know, and um, like my cell phone so they can call, I don't know, something. So we're kind of expanding on that idea um, on love, the tiers of care that people might want, but the basic profile will just cover sort of the everyday doctor visits that you would want and need the, the clinic for. So yeah, I would go ahead and just sign up because we won't bill you until in the rears of your first month that you want us to bill you for. And, okay. and for, the, for the month of April, because there's typically yeah. going to be a, a sign up fee, sign up fee. Sign up fee, and we're waiving that if you pre-register in April. And you won't be charged, if, if we meet our goals to open the doors August 1st, your first bill won't be till September. So okay. with that said, I'm getting uh, warning messages from Zoom that the, the call is about to shut down. So okay. um, thank you for answering that. I appreciate it. Anything else, you guys? 